Dad's time on the mountain started from 1926 to 1966. Davidson and Dad started in the mountain 1926. The Forest Service opened up trails into the mountains to give an opportunity to graze animals up there. Uh, they put mile posts at every mile way up the mountain. In 1965, the television station had joined Peter Cardani and son Armand to the mountains. They are just entering the mountains at this time. That's showing the green slide, the first cap on the mountain. This time we're at Windy Camp, looking up towards the, the lookout. There's Armin going to the lookout. Uh, the lookout was a forestry lookout that uh, was in service before my time. There was a trail and a wire for the program from the bottom of the mountain to the lookout. Now we're looking out towards Grizzly Mountain. Uh, you got to remember this was before the fire. The fire was uh, two years later. At first camp there, that uh, right the spring, the water came right out of the ground, couldn't get any clear water than we had there. Here we have a family picnic up on the mountain. The mountain is a multi-use. Of course, uh, allowed the visitors, campers. The main purpose of our trip with the mountain was to uh, doctor on uh, any oh, sore feet or anything that we had to deal with. Uh, when we went to the mountains, the sheep would be spread out over, oh, probably a mile. We had dogs that would be a herding dog. It would make a wide circle around the outside of the sheep, gradually turning them inwards. Each circle brought them tighter. That way it uh, didn't trample any of the grass on the mountain. Uh, once the dogs held the sheep in, tight enough that allowed um, dad and myself to uh, catch with a sheep hook the sheep needed dealing with and deal with them. Dad would be able to name off all the grasses on the mountains but I can't but he did a good job of it. Now we've come to what we use for a salt trough for the sheep. We uh, brought up three-quarter ground salt to the sheep. I think we used two ton a year. The, um, in the beginning, when they started up the mountain, uh, everything was taken up by uh, pack trains. And uh, the uh, herder, we had a herder that tended the sheep and a packer that uh, tended the camp. And uh, whenever needed, down to the valley and bring up the fresh supplies and uh, some more salt for the sheep. Uh, those uh, salt troughs were uh, hewn out of a log or dead tree and uh, 
that way it kept the salt up off the ground that didn't dissolve. picture of old basil soil uh, at the camp. We uh, had the camp there. They uh, built a stove out of a old bale chamber that uh, we dug a hole and set it on top of the hole and would hold a good supply of wood underneath it for go all night and dry the clothes and whatever else, the cooking course. This time we're at what we call the Pollywog Pond. There was a little pond across the mountain, just past the mine, between the mine and Beauty Springs. Uh, we always checked that pond when we went by. If there was any bear around there, they seemed to wander through that pond, maybe catching Pollywogs and so on, but it let us know what there was for predators on the mountain. And uh, those days we had to, in the fall of the year before, or somewhere along the line, we, uh, put rings around the tree to kill a tree so that uh, we uh, had a supply of uh, firewood for the following year, deadwood of course. There we had a situation where um, there were sheep that went over, had permit down to uh, Grizzly Mountain, and on a certain date their uh, permit allowed them to come back onto uh, what we call Lightning Camp, the uh, east end of uh, Crowfoot Mountain for a period of time before they left the mountain. The uh, herder, for some reason, uh, decided to move over on the, the other mountain a little bit sooner than he was supposed to, but it uh, turned out the lightning struck, and uh, if I remember right, killed 75 head of sheep. Um, the lightning, it was kind of interesting the way the lightning traveled through the ground, uh, uh, making a kind of a channel there, passing through the sheep that were bedded down, uh, leaving them dead, of course. Uh, we were interested to find through the years that the uh, no predators ever bothered those sheep that were killed with lightning for whatever reason. But uh, anyway, it was quite an experience for old uh, Tom McDonald that was hurting for the people at the time. He uh, was taking some salt down to a a place to put down for the, when the lightning hit and it knocked him to the ground and the pots that were on his stove and the tent were out on the ground. Dogs had disappeared over the end of the mountain by the time he came up. We, uh, there's one of our pups there just on the mountain. We uh, raise our own dogs for the most part. Sometimes the herder come on with his own dogs, but the most part, we had uh, always um, two herding dogs that would circle the band and bring them into a tight spot. Uh, and we had uh, always two dogs that would follow along when we were on the trail driving the sheep. The uh, ones on the trail dog, he would just circle from one end of the bunch on the trail to the other, back and forth, back and forth to keep moving. It was interesting. At this time, we uh, had the sheep bathered into a tight bunch to uh, work on them. Uh, you can see the dogs uh, acted as a corral by holding the sheep in solid enough so we could get in and catch them and work on them. And, uh, of course, did the doctor and I did the catching of the sheep. 